This past fall, about 100 members of Mount Tabor United Methodist Church participated in a book study connected to a sermon series addressing issues of racial justice and reconciliation. We used Latasha Morrison's book, Be the Bridge, Pursuing God's Heart for Racial Reconciliation. Through this series, we learned about, acknowledged, and lamented the truth of serious racial injustices, both past and present. Our hearts were called and inspired based on Christian teaching to repent and to become a force for racial justice and reconciliation in our community. The study was enlightening and convicting and left many of us yearning to do more to build on what we learned. Toward that end, and in celebration of Black History Month, we are offering Building Bridges, a video series in which participants from the fall study will share things that they learned or something that they have been inspired to do as a result of the study. Videos are posted each Wednesday. Whether you participated in the fall study or not, whether you are simply curious to learn more, or whether you are ready to jump into the work of racial justice and reconciliation, we hope you will find these videos helpful. Today I've invited Mac and Lisa Warren here to talk about their experience with Be The Bridge. And I'd like to start by just having them take a minute to introduce themselves. I'm Lisa Warren. I've been a, a church member at Mount Tabor United Methodist Church for about four years now. And um, I really appreciate opportunities like Be The Bridge, reading and learning and getting to know other members. Great. And I'm Mac, same last name as hers. Uh, uh, I, until uh, was right before we came to Mount Tabor, I retired as a pastor and we were looking for a church that um, met our needs and Mount Tabor seemed to hit the spot on that. Uh, I'm from uh, Wilkes County, just right up the road. Uh, actually, I grew up just right out of the Stone Mountain State Park. This park was sort of my playground, I might say. And I grew up in a little country store, uh, which was fun for me uh, because a lot of people came in, including a lot of black people came in. And I love to see uh, some of them come because they had kids that I could go out and play with and have somebody to play with since I was the only child. Ah, uh, that's sweet. So can we start by having you tell me why you wanted to be a part of the Be The Bridge group? Mainly, I want to be a part so I could find out other people's thoughts, uh, what they thought about it, and see if that would help me any. I wanted to be a part of the study because I've led a very insulated, white life. Um, unlike Mac, who grew up down here, I grew up uh, in New York on Long Island, and I was ignorant and unaware of how pervasive prejudice and discrimination is. Uh, I never can remember growing up seeing any discrimination um, within my community. My family never spoke badly about others any other group of people. Um, I, before this reading of the book together was offered, I had heard about redlining and was really quite surprised that this is something that is happening even today. So that shows you how insulated um, and ignorant I have been about things going on. And that's why I wanted to learn more. For me, seeing George Floyd murdered was um, horrific. Mm -hmm. And I think that that really uh, opened up a lot of eyes that I never saw that had been blinded. Um, so this was an important thing to do, to hear what others have experienced. This is a time, I think, in our country 
we have to have healing if we're going to survive as a democracy, mm -hmm. as a united country. Mm -hmm. So um, education, wanting to learn more was the reason mm -hmm. for joining the group. Thanks for sharing that. So can you share one or two highlights, takeaways, something that stuck with you from the study that you'd like to share with people watching this video? I'll answer that one. Actually, during the study, I came out kind of sad because I did know a lot of Blacks when I was growing up. Matter of fact, one of the first of my favorite Blacks was a lady by the name of Henrietta Brown. She had a little building where she did laundry for folks. And she's just a very sweet lady. Uh, if somebody died in the community, she immediately went there, stripped their beds, and took and washed the sheets and put clean sheets back on the bed. Uh, that's the way she did. And also, when I was born, my mother came down with phobitis. So she wasn't able to get up and do much. So she can't, they got her to come in to clean the house, maybe do some cooking and all that. And by that point, I, I was just a tiny little baby. Uh, but I can remember uh, after I got a little bigger, I'd be out in front of the store and I'd see her coming. And as soon as she got across the road, she'd say, you come here to your black mammy. And she, she, she wanted me to come to her. And I just loved her to death too. Um, one of my best friends in the world was a black guy that I worked with. Uh, he was also a preacher and uh, he passed, oh gosh, six, seven years ago, had a brain aneurysm. And I really missed him when we not only worked together, we went fishing together and uh, all kinds of things. And I really missed him. So that, that part made me sad. Another part that made me sad was, well, knowing uh, some of the things that they and their ancestors had to go through. Uh, mm -hmm. I didn't, I knew them now, but I didn't know what their families uh, were having to do and how they are having to live um, before then. Uh, and my, that made me sad to know about that. Uh, another thing that made me sad was, well, I'll, I'll answer that in a minute. <laughs> We'll get back to it. I, I just okay. appreciated the conversation and learning more about what other people thought and the experiences they have had um, up until that point in their life. Uh, and I guess I also appreciated um, about the thoughtfulness, what can be done to help smooth all this over, to create understanding, to create some kind of a back and forth so that we can put this behind us as individuals, as families, as a community, and hopefully one day as a country. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, speaking of um, some solutions or actions that can be taken, are there any uh, action, concrete actions that you were inspired to take have been inspired to take or are thinking about taking to try to play a role in racial justice and reconciliation because of the book and the discussion? I learned from the book that Be the Bridge has an opportunity for people to learn more and it's on Facebook. So I've joined the Be the Bridge group and there's a lot to read, a lot to listen to. There's so much that we don't know. Um, I was shocked that I had never heard about Green Greenwood, mm -hmm. Oklahoma. Mm -hmm. The Greenwood the total, neighborhood, I think. Yeah. The Greenwood neighborhood. Um, it was a very thriving community, mostly black, uh, intelligent, wonderful, thriving, prospering people. And I was shocked and appalled that they were totally wiped out and destroyed um, because of jealousy from white people. And I guess fear from white people. But um, that was um, unbelievable. So I know I have a lot, a lot more to learn. And why haven't I known about that? That is, that makes me angry. There's so much that um, has been covered up and should be a part of our history. If we all knew we could understand more and perhaps we wouldn't be still struggling as a country and as people to um, be
be willing to listen. And I guess that's the second takeaway. Be willing to listen. Don't assume that you know the person down the block, maybe, or just one city over who is a person of color. You grew up in the same time period with the same community going to maybe some of the you know same schools don't ever assume that their experience growing up in your area was the same mm -hmm. as yours that's that's for sure yeah so, great point. Uh, to listen more and to learn more mm -hmm. and hopefully as i do that i'll be prepared when again my my life is still surrounded mostly by people who look like me but as god brings people into my life as I believe he will, that I will be better prepared to be a bridge builder. Mm -hmm. That's great. Thanks. How about you, Matt? Um, I'm kind of missing where I didn't know I was a bridge builder, but I think it worked out that way. Uh, ever since we've been at the church, you know, Wednesday nights or Wednesday evenings, uh, the church would take a meal. Uh, down there and people will go and help serve and up to Bethesda uh, and, uh, homeless shelter uh, and I'd go along to minister also I'd do a devotional with them and have prayer and sometimes it'd take a little while I had some particularly the blacks that didn't even want nothing to do with me to begin with and maybe towards the end they'd be the ones that come to me and want me to pray for them we just wrap our arms around each other and have prayer so uh, I just want to let them know that somebody loved them and the church loved them as well. If they didn't, we wouldn't bring them a meal. And um, I really miss that. I'd be so glad mm -hmm. when this virus thing's over with so I can, we can start going back down as a group to serve them as they come down the line and uh, need have opportunity to uh, minister to them. I always refer, refer to them as my congregation uh, as they uh, would here and they, some of the new ones would come in. I start talking. They'd be back there. Some of said, "Shut up, and listen to him." I mean, they uh, took care of me, and it, it was really a nice experience. I really enjoyed that. And right now, I, I miss it. That was the highlight of my week. Hmm. And you were building bridges. Yes. Well, before we wrap up, is there anything else you'd like to share about your experience? Anything you've learned? Anything you'd like? To others maybe who haven't read the book to know about it or maybe if they have read the book and they like you are looking for ways to make a difference um, you know any other thoughts I, I encourage people to be open um, look around our world is changing we cannot survive if we continue this strife and anger and hatred mm -hmm. we cannot survive in the days ahead so I encourage people to learn to be open. Um, no matter what the color of our skin, we all want the same thing. Mm -hmm. And having Jesus as our Lord and Savior, if we truly have mm -hmm. Jesus in our heart, um, I would think that we would want to be a part of being a bridge to fellow human beings. I just encourage people, it will, it will help you. Um, and you'll be ready when God wants to use you to build a bridge with another human being. Thank you. Thank you. How about you, Mac? Anything else you'd like to share before we close it off? I think I about said it all. <laughs> all right. What I didn't say, she said, so. All right, well, thank you so much for sharing what you did. Um, I really appreciate it and enjoyed the conversation. Thanks for taking the time to listen in today. We hope you found a bit of inspiration to continue learning and perhaps to partner with us at Mount Tabor as we seek to truly love our neighbors as ourselves and to be a force for equality, justice, and peace in our churches, our community, our nation, and our world. We welcome all who feel called to learn, grow, and make a difference to join with us. Please email us at the email on your screen, gray.handwork at mounttaborumc.org with your ideas or to express interest in getting involved.